Thank you for that. Okay, <clears throat> so let me just start over. So today we're going to look at hypothesis testing, what A-B testing is, and uh, some of the principles of A-B testing. And I'm going to start with the hypothesis testing. So a hypothesis is just an insight into a natural world that you are trying to prove. It's, it's a concept that's not yet verified, but if you verify it and prove that, it would explain a certain fact or a phenomenon. So it's just, it would be an educated guess about something that's around you. So it has to be a real life phenomenon that you are trying to verify or prove. And it should be tasteable. That can be either ex in, by experiment or by observation. So uh, we'll use two types of hypothesis in our week challenge. So this week in AV tasting, we have two hypotheses hypothesis that's null and alternative hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is a state which there is no difference between the control and the variant group. So if our group are the same and there is no difference in our controlled or variant group, then we call that a null hypothesis. So it's a position that the change in the for our case, which is the smart ad design. So it's the position that the change in smart ad design made for the exposed group would result in no change. So if there's no different, if our smart ad design have not made any difference on our, our, ex on, on our exposed group, then that would be a null hypothesis. And <clears throat> on the alternative hypothesis, it's a challenge challenges the null hypothesis, and it's basically a hypothesis that the researcher believes that is true. So in our case, it's the opposing position that the changes in the smart art design, which is for the exposed group, would result in an improvement. So <clears throat> uh, if our smart art design has brought more users to our, to our product, then we say that it's an alternative hypothesis in our case. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what are the errors in my hypothesis tasting? Uh, there are two types of errors, type one and type two. So in type, in type one error, which is an error where we reject a null hypothesis when it's true. So if our null hypothesis is true, in that case, if there is no difference between our control variant and if our control group and variant group, then that would be type one error. And type two error is when we fail to reject the null hypothesis when it's false. So when it's false, meaning that there is a significant difference between the control and the variant group, then that is the, and we fail to reject that hypothesis, that is type two error. And these errors are usually avoided by calculating the statistical significance and <clears throat> so a taste is considered to be statistically significant when we have enough evidence to prove that the result of the sample also exists in the, in the population. So if we have a sample size that's in our population, then that taste is considered to be statistically significant. And if we have evidence to prove that. So what is A-B tasting? So uh, okay, I'm going to stop and see that if you guys have read the document and if you have already seen what it contains, I'm sure you have seen what's the word A-B tasting. So can someone maybe define what A-B tasting is? Any volunteer? Anyone? Maybe you guys can type it on the chat. Okay, Margaret. Yes, go ahead. Um, I think it's testing two different um, uh, variables to see which one works better. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, I think you were breaking up. Yes, you're right. Can you just yes? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, I think it's a way to compare. Uh, it's a way to compare uh, questions or something to figure out which becomes better. Yes, that's correct. Okay, AJD. Uh, also, in uh, other words, it's a way to measure uh, two different uh, approaches or just uh, saying that you have two things that you need to find which one is more effective or something that you should go with. For instance, you have two buttons and one is green and the other one is blue. Which one would you rather use? You might need to uh, make a A-B testing to find which one is better, depending on the experience from users. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that definition. That's more precise. Okay, thank you, Judy. Uh, Jonas, go ahead. Okay, uh, I'll be testing this. Uh, an online experiment conducted on a website or a mobile application or an, any ad, and it is to test potential improvements in comparison to a control version. Just simply, it puts or it allows me to see which variation or version works better for our audience based on statistical analysis. Yeah. Can you help me? Hello. Can you help me? I can hear you. Thank you for your answer. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, so, oh, okay. thank you. Uh, so, I think I was right here. Okay, so, yeah, you are all correct. So, an, an A B tasting, it's just an experiment where you have two groups or two variants, let's say A and B, and you are comparing this variants against each other, and you are to you are trying to evaluate which one performs better in a, a random environment. So let's say you have two different groups, A and the B, and so you're going to have different type of experiments, which, which can be a random, a random experiment, and you are going to evaluate which one is performing better than the other one. So, so the two variants to be tasted, which is A and the B, can be classified as control group, or treatment group or so the control group are those that are shown in the current state of that are shown this the current state of our product so for example for example if you are in, uh let's say in our case an ad so we have two types of ads so the first one is a, a dummy ad and the second one is the ad which a smart ad made so so for for the first group which is the control group these are the the ones that you show your dummy ad. So, and the second one is the the treatment group, or in our case, the exposed group are the ones you show the smart ad ad to. So, so that's how you classify your group, uh, the two variants, and the conversion the conversion rates for each group is then monitored. So, what we mean conversion rate is for example, if one user, uh, let's say you are displaying an ad for some company, let's say it could be Adidas. So if a user clicks on the ad and engages with that website or with that ad, it could be the Adidas ad, then 
that is called the conversion rate. So that's the number of engagement to the ad. So, so the conversion rate for each group is then monitored. So in each group is monitored which one ha performs better, so which one has more conversion rates, and we also need to ha monitor that when we are calculating our A-B testing. Okay, is that a question? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. You can move on. Do you have a question? About the... Call me Tamar. Tamar. Tamar is easier. Uh, Amma, you you say uh, you were explaining us about the conversion time or rate. Uh, when we are watching YouTube, we are forced to watch the ad. Is that considered as a com a conversion rate or what? I'm sorry, I think I missed the second half. When you're watching a YouTube video and you what? You are forced to watch the uh, the first, like, first seconds. Is that uh, included in the conversion or time? Uh, I don't think so. So if you engage with that ad, if you if that ad is for example a website to some uh, other, if it's a link to another website, then if you click that ad and if you go to that website and if you I don't know do some activity, then that would be a conversion rate. So I don't oh. think just viewing it is is called a conversion rate. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is that a question, Margaret? Um, I just wanted to answer also in the form of question, like to answer Thamar, but also I'm not so sure. So, some when you're watching a YouTube ad, sometimes you might fully watch the, you might fully engage with the whole. Um, ad and then sometimes you might clip you might click skip ad before it actually finishes and sometimes you might click do not recommend this ad so i think does conversion rates meaning mean that so if i fully watch the ad i can be grouped as an interested uh, client if i skip i like um just classify the three groups of people is that what it is um so yeah i mean i for a user to have a conversion rate then they need to uh, engage with the link or you need, they need to perform something so you cannot just i don't think just viewing a video can consider a conversion rate uh, okay. Can I say that it will be the targeted variable? Uh, I don't understand the question. Maybe if you can elaborate the question, Joseph. Yes, uh, I would like to make a link with our our project. So, what might be the conversion rates here? Because it's like I do not understand when the concept. So our in our case, then the so the experiment has already been complete, if you've seen. So it's an already complete yeah. experiment. That's I think it was done in June 2020. So yeah. uh, here uh, we don't have that data in our in our data frame. So if you see, we don't know how many users have actually engaged with the app. So in our case, it's not actually we don't have any source that indicates. The target variable is the shows the conversion rate. It's just uh, if, for example, if we have a new ad, let's say you're trying to have another the same ad, but here right now at this at this moment at the present moment, if a user clicks on the ad, if for example our ad is about Adidas shoes, and if a user click, clicks on the ad and the user 
uh, engage or make some activity on that Adidas website or if they make a purchase or not even a purchase. Okay, I get it. Then it's like we use it. No, it's like we use it in order to fill the the, the target variable, right? Like mm -hmm. in our case, they use it to. In our case, they use it to fill the yes or the. Uh, to answer to the question by yes or no, right? Yeah, so that would be no. It would be a big way to answer the yes or no, but in our case, that would be a no. Yeah, I, I was saying that they used it, right, in order to uh, to classify the users, right? Classify the users as what? The, with your explanation, I'm I'm trying to so, uh, see you, how it. You, it the control out. group. In the... Yes, it's like we use it in order to classify the users into the two groups: the control and the exposed group. Right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the control group in our case is the one that shown an ad that was not made by this company. So that would be a dummy ad. So a smart ad or our client, if you've seen the document, our client is the smart ad company and that smart ad has their own ad about that about that specific brand. And that specific brand is shown to the treatment or the or the exposed group. So does that is that clear? Is the difference clear? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so they don't have the engagement here is not indicated. Okay. Uh, and the next. That was just to explain. Uh, it's not a question. Share my insights. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, where were oh, we were talking about the conversion rate for each group, and so you have to always monitor that to in order to perform the A/B testing. But here, we all we already have the data. So, so this is this is this statement is true if you are still conducting that research, and you have to see that. The randomness and the A-B testing is very uh, important and it's key to isolate the impact of the changes made and to reduce the potential impact of confounding variables. Okay. So let's say, uh, so let's say we have uh, different uh, users, let's say we have a, a visitors to our website and we group this users into, so we Let's look at this diagram and let's say we have a number of visitors and we group this our visitors into two groups, which is the control group and the exposed group. And let's say that in our case, uh, the control group or option A is the, those that are shown the dummy data, the dummy ad and the ex exposed group are shown, option B are shown the, the ad that was made by smart ad. And uh, if, the, if there is a difference in the engagement or if uh, our control group, if our exposed group has more engagement to our data, to our ad, then uh, this shows the conversion rates. So this, this ad, this diagram clarifies this last uh, paragraph. Okay, principles of baby tasting. So, so before conducting A-B testing or before we actually dive into our work, then we have the first thing we need to do is we have to define the baseline conversion rates and the minimum de detectable effect. So what are the what are baseline conversion rates? Well, it's so uh, 
that's the current converger rates under the existing group. For example, uh, let's say, uh, for example, in an experiment to determine whether a user signed up for a website with the expected answer yes, then that will be considered a, conversion, a baseline conversion rate. So that is like, uh, like we mentioned now, if we have a control group and exposed group, let's say for the, here, if we look at the diagram, for the control group, let's say this is the control group, and this is the dummy ad, and if 70% of people engaged with the, with the ad, and if they have 70% conversion rate, and if the exposed group have 25% of conversion rate, then the minimum or the baseline conversion rate would be uh, 25 percent minus 27 or uh, 17 percent so that would be the minimum amount detected or the minimum amount needed for uh, the minimum amount of conversion rates under that group so that is the first thing we need to define and the minimum detectable effect is so it's the minimum improvement over the conversion rate so let's say uh, so the first group let's say the control group sh is shown an ad that maybe has a button here or an input field here and if the output is 70 percent and if the exposed group is shown an ad which have a button here and an input field here then this is this would be the minimum amount of change required to have this amount of users to to check to check out the ad or to interact with the ad so, so the minimum detectable effect is the mi minimum amount of improvement under that conversion rate. Okay, uh, do we have a question? Yes, choose yes. Thank you to come again. That's okay. Okay, what's your question? I would like you to come again on the explanation on MDE, minimum detectable effect. If you can. All right. Yeah. So the minimum improvements or yes. Okay. Okay. So the minimum detectable effect is the small amount of improvements over the over the conversion rates. So uh, let's say here, uh, this is the control group has this type of ad, the dummy ad, and our exposed group has the smart ad. And the minimum, uh, detectable effect is just the small improvement over the conversion rate. So how many, how many improve, how much improvement is there on the conversion rate? So that's the minimum detectable effect. So the first, so that is the first step we need to define when calculating the AT testing. And the second one is to calculate the samples as needed for our experiments. Uh, so we use different matrix to, uh, that we used in step one, and we use the statical power and significance level. You will see that in the future. And we use uh, statical power and significance level with conversion rate and minimum detectable effect. And the third step is to drive your traffic toward your variation until you reach the target sample of each variation. So it's just you uh, you drive traffic to your variation. So you so you might have a few number of variations at first, and then you keep on adding your uh, traffic to that variation. So and then finally, you just evaluate the result, and you make your own conclusion to that result, and. So yeah, this is the basic principle of A-B testing. This is how we calculate your A-B testing. So this is for the case of classical A-B testing. So in classical A-B testing, uh, it's usually a few number of, when you're calculating the classical A-B testing, so you have your number of users are known. So you have n number of users. And so this is one of the limitation of classical A-B testing is that it's not it's not usually as powerful for the unknown number of users or variants. So yeah.
uh, if the difference in the performance between variations reach the MD or the minimum detectable effect, or if it ex exceeds it, then the, hy the hypothesis of the experiment is proven right. Or if it's necessary, then you go back and start from scratch. So you always have to uh, notice the performance between the variation uh, that has reached the minimum, the MD, if it has exceeded it or if it has reached the exact amount. So that in our case, then that would, this uh, hypothesis test would be proven right. Okay, yes, Margaret. Um, I think I don't quite understand the difference between BCR and MD. Could you please um, elaborate further? Yes, okay. So in baseline conversion rates, then so we have the conversion rate is the amount of people that are has engaged with our ad, right? So for our control group, let's say, or for our experiment group or exposed group, then uh, that will be the yes number of yeses. So if I click on the ad, uh, let's say if I engage with the ad, that will be yes, right? If you looked at your data, uh, the number of clicks, or if did we have a yes or no column, right? So that would be uh, the yes. So those who have engaged with the with our ad and the number of the sample size uh, or the con controlled or the exposed group. So for example, if we look, if you guys look at the, the first row in your data, I'm not sure. Um, so let me just try to show you. Okay, can you still see the screen? Um, yes. Right. So, okay, so uh, for the conversion rate, we would have to look at the ones that has uh, actually engaged with our ad, so that would be the ones that have a one in the yes section. So here we have, if you look at this, then this user has uh, engaged with the ad. So this is a yes. So which group does it does it involve, or which part, which group is is it part of? Then that is it, it's part of the exposed group. So to see the baseline conversion rate, then we we calculate. Uh, so we have the total amount of exposed exposed group. So we look at the total number of users that belong to the exposed group, right? And uh, we so if we have number of yeses, let's say we count all the yeses, and so the baseline conversion rate would be the number of yeses divided by the number of uh, the number of total size of the control group. Does that make sense? Uh, Margaret, was that a question? So that would be the baseline conversion rate. But in the minimum in the minimum detectable effect, it would be the improvement over the conversion rate of the so basically there can be Okay, I think I have a delay on my end, or, okay, just continue, Margaret. Um, so does that mean the BCR can be for both exposed and, so you have to create a BCR for the exposed group and the yes. control group separately? Yes, it has to be for the, for that, uh, for that control thing. But it's actually for the control group, right? This, this is for the control group. Hmm? 
so um, yes. Yes. Uh, I think that the BCR is clear for me. But I would like to know how I can compute the MDP. So if you can get, if you can give a practical example, it will be nice. Okay, how to compute the BCR? No, the MDE, the BCR is clear. Okay, the MDE? Yeah. MDE. Yes. Hello? So I'm just, yeah, I can hear you. I was just trying to look for, uh, I think we have here. Let me just show you guys here. I think we just. So this is uh, an online calculator of a few baseline. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one example that shows the baseline conversion rate and minimum det detectable effect of your sample size. So let's say in our case, we have uh, Okay. So you, uh, this this website shows that, and but in our case, let's just um, let's if you continue, then there is yeah here. So so MDE it's calculated as a percent of baseline conversion rate. So if we have a desired conversion rate lift, so we when you are working on uh, your project, then you need to have the desired conversion rate lift. Which is so, for example, if if you want to decide that this an ad you're showing, the new ad has just to prove that it is better than the previous ad, you need to have a minimum amount of uh, conversion rate lift desired. So you need to specify a minimum amount. For example, if you PCR is twenty percent and you assume that you need a conversion rate of at least twenty percent. So for, when you start to calculate the MDE, you just first you need to have with the right amount of improvements uh, calculated or at hand before. So you have the desired conversion rate lift and you divide that with the baseline conversion rate and you multiply that with 20%. So for example, let's say you have um, in this ad, let's say you have, you want 5% increase in the conversion rate, right? So that would be if you have five percent, and let's say you have, so let's say you have five percent of conversion rate left required, and what is the baseline conversion rate? Let's say uh, it's ten percent. So you would divide five over ten, and you multiply that by a hundred. So it's calculated as a percent of the baseline conversion rate. So that would be uh, that would be five over ten, and you multiply that with 10%, with 100%. So you would have, uh, you, you would have the MDE. So there is a formula for that. That's it's why- It's very clear. That's, I, I would like to know how to get the desired conversion rate. Right? Uh, 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 I would like to know I, I want to, how to get the value of the desired conversion rate. Right? Uh, I mean, the one so we, you, we compared so to. So you understand? The, so yes. You understand yeah, I, what desired conversion rate is? Yes, I understand so, now what it is. Okay, okay, which part is? Now, part? Uh, now I'm thinking about how to get the, the need, the needed BCR. I mean, uh, Desired conversion rate? Yes. Okay, so that would have to be given. So we, you'd have to yeah. be given. So you, there, it's not calculated. So it's, it might be based on your user or your client. So so you have to have that at first at hand. Oh, all right. So thank you very much, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. So uh, is uh, clear now? Okay. Okay, internet. Yes.
Okay, uh, just to iterate over the PCR. Uh, uh, so in our data, we have uh, the control group in the experiment group, right? So uh, what we're looking for in uh, VCR is that the number of yeses we get from our experiment group over uh, over the uh, control group. Am I right? No, no, no. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think so. So I might have uh, mistaken you guys. So it has to be for the control group. So I think I said for the experiment, for the exposed in the control group. I get it. Right? Uh, let me explain. It has to so in our okay. data, we have uh, two group of uh, people, right? The control group and the uh, treatment group or the experiment group. The control group are uh, those who saw the previous uh, yeah. or like our current uh, ads in the treatment or the ex experiment groups are the ones that are going to like see or the, the, the ones that are like seeing the new uh, ad, right? So while we're in, uh, to, to create the baseline uh, conversion rate, so we, uh, what, we, what we're doing is the number of yeses we get from our, like uh, the experiment group to the total size of the group. That, is that what we're doing? The number of yeses that we're counting right now is it for the uh, whole experiment? The ones we give, or the whole? Yes, the whole. The whole yes, or uh, the yes. so you have the to whole. Count. Okay. So, so you have to count. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so you have to count the number of yeses and divide that to the number of those uh, specific group to the total size of the. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay, do we have another question? Yes, Margaret. Um, from the document we've been given, I don't see where we can get the conversion rate lift and um, you say that should be given? Okay, so this is just to get you introduced. You may not use it right now, but... So I uh, maybe I haven't seen the data yet specifically or in detail. Maybe, I don't think you need it right now, but maybe I'll get back to you on that. I'm not sure myself. No, I understand your question. That's a good question, actually. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Okay, all right then. Uh, so by setting this uh, MDE, then we def then we define the conversion rate increase sufficient for the taste to declare. So uh, having a minimum improved conversion rate, then we see that if our new uh, like if it meets our baseline conversion rate and if we meet the minimum amount detected needed and if the if the rate satisfies the sufficient taste with that sufficient taste if it satisfies our need then we can say that this ad or this new asset is a winner if it has a lower md then the slighter conversion rates will be detected by the taste and maybe it will not consider it as a winner so yeah, uh, so we've discussed how to calculate MDE. Uh, I'm sure you guys understand. Okay, so okay, so the sample size needed. So sample size is just in so in order to have a meaningful uh, sample size for a test, it's calculated using all of the four uh, things we were talking about. So what it, so what is statistical power? Well, it's also called as hypothesis taste. It's the power of hypothesis taste, and it's the prob probability that a taste correctly rejects the null hypothesis. So if our taste uh, rejects our null hypothesis, then that will be, uh, that will be a statistical power. Uh, so it's the probability of a true positive result. So, uh, 
So if a statical power is just a probability that correctly rejects our false or null hypothesis and has a relevance only when the null is false. So uh, yeah, uh, it's only useful when the null hypothesis is rejected or when it's false. So in significance label, it's the, it's the boundary for a specific uh, statistical significance. So when you, when you are interpreting the p-value, p-value is the probability that the difference between two values uh, in a random chance. So it's an evidence against the null hypothesis, what p-value is. So the smaller the p-value you have in a, when, you calculate, when you're calculating, the stronger the chance of you rejecting the null hypothesis. For, so for a significance level of, let's say, 0 0.05, if the p-value is less than that, then we can reject the null hypothesis. So this is going to be the insight you are going to, or the conclusion you're going to have when you are working on your uh, classic A-B testing. So, so the smaller p-value you have, the stronger you have uh, rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, so the significance level is going to be calculated, it's going to be used as this to interpret the p-value. Okay, so when you're evaluating A-B testing and when you're making, uh, so when you're evaluating A-B testing and when you're making, uh, so this is the principles, the four principles we have. Let's say this is the first, uh, okay. Uh, okay, question, Tamar? Yes, so you talked about the p-value. And you said uh, the the lower the p value, the what I didn't get that uh, statement, and so I would like you to talk more about the use of p value in this uh, testing. Okay, so um, okay. Um, Let's say when you're working right now, it's p-value is just going to be the probability of the difference between the two values, uh, and that's in a random chance. So p-value, when calculating a p-value, you have a specific formula uh, that you need to follow, and it's, it's going to show it's your evidence against the null hypothesis. So you're going to use this p-value to whether reject the null hypothesis or whether to say that uh, whether you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you use that to to verify that uh, the null hypothesis, whether it's true or whether it's false. So, yeah, so if you're, when you're calculating, if you are, if you have a p-value that's less than the significance level, then you can reject that hypothesis and you can say that it did not bring, uh, for our case, let's say, for the brand awareness, it did not bring an increase in brand awareness. So it's going, it's going to help you to decide to make that decision. So if or you use you use a p value to compare with your significance level, and you make your conclusion using the p value. Is this uh, significant? Uh, so same as the confidence value. Uh, of the syntax or uh, so it's uh, p value is just your I don't know it's uh, it's your probability to to a certain value. I'm asking this because I, I've been dealing with the the p value confidence interval significant what, but I fail to understand the p value. I don't know why. Maybe I need to read more about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so in statistics, it's really so you have to understand uh, the this concepts first when you're working on uh, if you, before calculating the this uh, significance taste, and you have to understand what p value is. You have to understand what z taste or z score is. So you, you first need to understand this this uh, terms. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, 
it's just your percent p values just you yeah, the probability you have to get in some percent of some result so it's it's just the probability of you getting a result or some specific result so it could be 0 0.05 or based on your calculation or based on your data it might vary so you're going to use that to to measure your a b testing or to measure if to measure it against your statistical uh, power and you're going to draw conclusions using that thank you okay uh, okay okay so uh, let's say this plot uh, shows the the, the distribution of the control group and the probability of the awareness and so this let's say this is for the where are the, the exposed group for those that has uh, that are given the smart ad ad and let's say this blue one is for the one that that was given the dummy ad so this is the probability of the control group and you plot them and you you, you, com you compare the distribution against each other. So the second, so the, on the third step, you evaluate the null or the alternative hypothesis. And for so, so this plot shows the null and alternative hypothesis for the taste, and it defines the statistical power. So uh, we have the statistical power of 0 0.05. So you guys, when you're working, uh, you have a certain calculation to calculate this statistical power and significant slave, uh, so you don't have to worry. So this significant label is the alpha here, if it's shown 0 0.025. So uh, you define the statistical power and the sig significance label by showing it how they are represented. So you represent uh, these values and you plot them and you draw your conclusion from this. So yeah, so this is the bigger picture of, of classic A-B testing. So we have provided uh, you guys with uh, simple uh, scripts that can help you calculate your, or that get you started. So we have uh, different functions that to calculate your Z score and your confidence interval. So you guys can use this and you guys can also, we also have uh, here, how to calculate the p-value is going to help you in your calculation. So you guys can use this. It's um, you guys can work on top of this, or you guys can have a better approach and work on that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it for today's session. Do you guys have any question? Yes, Margaret. Um, so you've been teaching classical A-B testing, right? Yes, the, so the rest will be followed tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Okay, and the code that's given, uh, it's for A-B testing, is it also specifically for classical or it, the yeah, code so is basically for... So yeah, it's for A-B testing. If you guys see anything related to A-B testing, it just says A-B testing. It's for the classic But is it for... You can actually use this script on uh, sequential A-B testing also, or it's just going to calculate the p-value or z-square. So it's not, you don't, you can also use that in the other ones. Okay. So it's not actually for only the classic A-B testing, yeah. Okay, uh, did I see any hand? Okay, does anybody have any more question? Hope uh, today's session was clear. Okay. Okay, thank you.